And the host of RN Breakfast, Patricia Carvelis, joins us now for our regular chat on federal politics. Uh, Patricia, g'day. I know we're going on to other subjects, but it's, yeah, I, no doubt you've been keeping across what's happening with this AEMO report today. And it's interesting to hear different perspectives from experts in the field um, as opposed to, to what AEMO, the, the conclusions AEMO is making. Yeah, uh, what I find watch this space and it was just mentioned in that interview is what are the solutions we're going to need so i interviewed somebody uh, tristan edis this morning who's a kind of expert in this area and he said electrification is going to have to be part of the solution which you can ramp up more more quickly too now remember the greens did the deal with labor on electrifying homes it was a deal which was pretty broad we don't know all the details there is now going to be pressure on the government to actually execute on that um, and to deliver probably in a way that um, electrifies more homes. The other suggestion that came from the interview I did, because there, as you say, there's a lot of how do we deal with this shortfall is particularly in relation to Victoria, that um, uh, Tristan was suggesting that in Victoria, we've got the biggest problem where there's, well, it's, it happens to be where I live, and I felt like he was describing my house actually, where <laughs> it relies on a gas heater. Yes, it does, ducted heating gas, but um, a lot of those homes for the, the purpose of air conditioning have reverse cycle in some of the rooms. That uh, there needs to be a campaign to say, just use the re reverse cycle with the heating option um, instead of the electric option, instead of gas over the worst period to try and deal oh, with yeah. any shortfalls. So there are actually some solutions um, if there is some leaning into this uh, pretty quickly. But look, you know, the, the pace of the transition to renewables, more dispatchable energy, all of that has to be on the agenda. But uh, it seems that... Um, Obviously, on the back of yesterday's announcement about prices going up and now we're hearing about potential shortfalls, just shows that um, our energy transition is, is quite vexed and difficult at this point and we, we do need to be listening to some of those other solutions too. Now, Patricia, yesterday around midday, I came across the former Prime Minister, Paul Keating, in the makeup room at the ABC here, and I was wondering, are we going to get some classic Paul Keating in this press club address? And, and we did. And another Prime Minister has come out criticising this, this AUKUS deal. Yeah, so you're right, Paul Keating, and it's actually all on ABC iView, worth watching and making your own mind. It was blistering, wasn't it? So he answered the question of journalists, but also took the questions of uh, uh, Laura Tingle, our own Laura Tingle, I like to, uh, our own, um, own people. But it was, it was quite blistering, not entirely surprising. I think the, uh, the colourful nature was certainly, you know, within his, his uh, character, but the he has been critical of the AUKUS deal and the submarine deal, but he did, he was quite scathing, wasn't he, of the Prime Minister and, and, uh, and of Penny, Penny Wong. Wong. Yeah. Now, he's been critical of Penny Wong for a while and, you know, I think Penny Wong is her own woman and takes her own advice on foreign affairs and doesn't really need to be told by um, any person uh, what to think and has made her own conclusions, not just because security forces told her or intelligence told her, but, but she makes her own assessments based on the advice she's getting. Today, though, you asked me about other Prime Ministers. I spoke with Malcolm Turnbull, a more recent Prime Minister who's privy also more recently to advice. Now, he's been for some time critical of AUKUS on the grounds of sovereignty, yep. as you know. He took it a bit further today. He's critical of AUKUS also because he says he doesn't trust the UK, which is one of our partners here, and their economy to, uh, to actually be an investment partner that we can necessarily trust in the longer term, right? Pretty um, interesting comments from Malcolm Turnbull. Here's a grab from that interview. It has enormous economic problems. I mean, Britain has 7 million people on the NHS waiting list. You know, is Britain going to be financially strong enough to be our partner in this the Royal Navy has been shrinking, and it's been shrinking because of budget constraints in the UK. I mean, their economy is the slowest growing economy of any major economy in the world. It's got fundamental existential problems, and you've got to ask yourself whether Britain is going to be able to sustain investment in its Navy and its military in the years ahead. So that, that was certainly... 
really brings in a new argument, if you like. Um, as he's said, and he's since commented on his own commentary, oh, it's getting very meta, isn't it, on Twitter. Um, this argument, you know, it's, there's been concerns about uh, the UK's ability to really deliver econ economically on this proposition as well in the longer term. And so it's not just sovereignty, it's also about uh, realising this new AUKUS submarine. He's also concerned about the fact that it's a new concept. And of course, when you have an origin uh, concept like this being built that doesn't have a precedent, you often have problems and delays. So one of the other things he said, and I do think, and I do want to really say this, um, it's a very relevant point. So Paul Keating and Malcolm Turnbull, they both are critical of AUKUS, but from different perspectives. Right? They, they don't have the same view. They have different perspectives, but some of them overlap on sovereignty and the best options for our country. We know that, for instance, Malcolm Turnbull thinks that French deal was a better one. And yesterday we heard from Paul Keating that he believes that the Collins class submarines are the right option for Australia. The government contests that. But one thing that Malcolm Turnbull said that really resonates with me and I'm sure some of our viewers is that we should be having a big discussion when such a big investment is being made and when our own national security is being, um, uh, you know, really discussed at this level. Having a big and democratic process for discussing yeah, the best options for us is important. It is really important. And Malcolm Turnbull's issue is that we didn't have it before. Yeah. And it's been uh, given to us as a fait accompli now. So now we're seeing some of the critique and we're going to hear more of it. I mean, Paul Keating says that in the rank and file in the ALP, uh, people don't support this. And I think he's... I'm not sure if we can claim that the majority don't, but I think among the grassroots left, there are concerns about this plan. So I think you'll hear more of it in coming weeks and months, as I like to say. Yeah, and it was interesting to hear during that discussion yesterday at the National Press Club with former Prime Minister Paul Keating that uh, it appears that those intra family disputes can often be more intense and bitter than inter-family disputes with him referencing the right and left and him being more of a Bolshevik than Ben I think now. he was referring to Sussex Street, unless you're a political yeah. uh, hound. You know, Sussex Street, Street in Sydney is the Labor Party headquarters where the right and the left have always fought it out. Of course, Paul Keating is of the right. That's my right hand. <laughs> the right, but the now it's the left-wing Prime Minister who's actually cheering on this or giving bipartisanship uh, to this. It is. It just shows, doesn't it? The politics just turns, you know, left, right. It's just really, I think, people making conclusions about what they think is right for the country, and that's contested. OK, good chat. Thanks, Patricia. See ya.